Chapter 13 through 17 in John's Gospel are known as the Farewell Discourse. Because here Jesus speaks to his disciples just before his arrest, trial, and death. Jesus prepares his disciples for his departure from them and for their life in his absence. What Jesus envisions as the future for his disciples is the present reality for the reader of the gospel because this contemporary church lives without the physical presence of Jesus and is sustained by Jesus' words. Jesus' words in chapter 13 through 17 offer a vision of a new life that is possible for all who follow him. At the heart of this vision is the community's love for one another. Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. How can the church be an effective witness to Jesus' love if it cannot enact love among its own members? The love Christians are commanded to have for one another will continue the work and be the presence of Jesus after his death and resurrection. The language of love is a different ethical language from the language of discipleship found in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Rather, the language of love found in John's Gospel is a language of fullness rather than emptying. One gives one's life for one's friends as an act of love, not as an act of self-denial and self-sacrifice, as it is understood in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In John's Gospel, one gives out of the abundance of one's love, not out of the denial of self. Fullness and sharing of love characterize discipleship and faith. The Gospel of John makes it clear that the disciples' love for one another derives from and is modeled on Jesus' love for his followers. Jesus loves his followers by making God known to them, giving them God's word, and embodying God's love calling many and varied sheep to his fold, calling his followers friend, not servant, and laying down his life for his friends. The biblical good news is that the kingdom of heaven has come near. And it has come near most fundamentally in the person of Jesus Christ and through his incarnation among you. Of a love that is beyond calculation and payment and more specifically is a spontaneous love that forgives sins and serves others. Jesus encourages his followers to three forms of love. Unconditional love of God, love of neighbor as oneself, and love of one another. The church and congregational life at times may be challenging because the church is a stressed and changing place and does not always manage to rise above pettiness, self-interest, and plain old garden variety sin. And so then, how do we go about loving one another as Jesus first loved us? Here are some possibilities for consideration. We can love one another simply by showing up, by offering leadership and participating together 
on one or more of the many committees and teams as we rebuild our church. Another possibility which has come to fruition. Back in November, Blair and I worried, how are we going to do this sabbatical? And we got that done. <laughs> We're almost there. <laughs> surprises that happen along the way. Who was going to be the sabbatical supply people? Wow! Yeah. Were we ever blessed? And we've come together and loved one another now that our sabbatical supply folks have gone away. And they're home safely, by the way. Um, here we are loving one another through the next couple of weeks until Blair returns home, refreshed and renewed. And we're loving one another even as Sophia grieves the loss of her sister. This is tough stuff we've been doing. loving one another in our community. <coughs> As uh, founder and director of the Mixed Abilities Choir, this group continues to amaze me. And um, they love one another in our music therapy sessions, even when the maracas are flying and somebody's ticked off that they didn't get to sit next to their favorite buddy. <laughs> we work it out. <laughs> And in my role as chaplain over at Branch 118 Royal Canadian Legion, I've heard some amazing, heartbreaking um, stories from our vets who have laid down their lives for their friends and us. And a lot of those dear guys who have served their country, they did it so that I could conduct a choir like the Mixed Abilities Choir, and those folks would be accepted and embraced in community life. That's pretty neat agape love, isn't it? It's a delight to nurture the folks in the Mixed Abilities Choir. It's a delight to watch self-esteem grow and to help someone learn a new guitar chord, or to invite a new guy, um, a student of mine, who comes from an entirely different faith path, my friend Asher, who supports the choir. And that's pretty cool. The commandment to love one another has its primary focus on the life of the Christian community. That focus does not provide grounds for dismissing the ethical seriousness of the great or new commandment. Indeed, the history of the church and of individual communities of faith suggests that to love one another may be one of the most difficult things that Jesus has asked. There are many circumstances in which it is easier sometimes to love one's enemies than it is to love those with whom one lives, works, and worships day by day. So love for one another is to be the identifying mark of the Christian community in our world. And as our world becomes increasingly secularized, it's kind of difficult to be a Christian sometimes. <coughs> Friends, I'm blessed by our love for one another as your board chair. It's been a real learning curve. And I'm glad to have um, a wonderful group that meets regularly, and we agree to love one another, even when we disagree. 
we get through some tough stuff decision making wise. And in gratitude, I say thank you. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Amen. Will you pray with me? Holy God, great mystery, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus, whose words guide our actions, our thoughts, and our journey together. We give you thanks for time well spent sharing our love with one and for one another. We breathe into each moment that challenges us. We move forward trusting that our increasing faith may guide us further on our journey. We give you thanks for your son whose example of love guides us, teaches us, with words that challenge us to grow as a Christian community. We offer our friends.